An interrupt is created by a random event such as hitting an A on a keyboard and another type of interrupt is a periodic interrupt where for instance a microcontroller may wake up every five minutes sample the temperature, send the temperature and go back to sleep for another five minutes and every five minutes it will take the temperature and that's called a periodic interrupt. What we have here is a hardware interrupt where a voltage changing from the idle high condition to the idle low condition causes an interrupt service routine to be executed when you hit a character on the keyboard. And so that's an asynchronous or random event because we never sure when that key is going to be pressed, but a periodic interrupt means that it's a time thing that based on hardware timers in the microcontroller that says every so often it's going to interrupt the normal processing of information in a program to go out and do something special. In embed, there's something called the interrupt in class. And what this does is it deals with asynchronous types of events. For instance, if we have a rising edge where a voltage goes from an idle low to an idle high condition, it will trigger it. Or you might have where you have a falling edge like we had with the start bed, where it goes from a high condition to a low condition, that will trigger an interrupt service routine. Now, one of the first things we have to do is use interrupt in, specify a pin name and a actual pin to set this up if we're going to be using hardware. And the example we're going to use is we're going to use the SW3 push button to actually trigger it when we push it down and that will be on the falling edge here. Later we'll see that you can also enable IRQs or enable interrupt requests and disable interrupt requests and we'll take a look at how all these things work in the program that we're going to look at next. Let's take a look at this program that shows us an asynchronous interrupt. You can see here that we've got this new statement interrupt in and we're going to associate that with SW3 which is a push button because we need a digital input that will either go low to high or high to low. And we've called it PB. Now notice in our main how we tie in this in we say PB.fall for falling edge which means it's going to be idle high such as a push button when we don't push it it's high when we press the push button it's going to drop low and then we specify here what code we're going to execute when the push button falls low and that's going to be the address count me in which is the address of the interrupt service routine and this is the only connection there is between the main line here and our interrupt service routine is this giving it the address and after this when the push button does fall low it's going to then interrupt wherever it is in this code and add one to a count where the count has been set to zero here in our counter in our global variable and our global variable is the easiest way to actually communicate between the main and the interrupt service routine. So what you're going to find is every time we push the push button, it's going to go up here, add one to the count, and then continue on wherever it left off here. Now if we take a look at the code that we've got, it's going to say forever be in this loop. And it says if counter equals zero, which means I haven't pressed anything yet, it's going to turn off the green and blue and turn on the red. And then if you press the push button, because it's just going to keep looping around here and it's going to be red, red, red. When we push the push button, it's going to add one to the counter, which means it's going to say it's not zero, it's one for the next count where red and blue are shut off and green is going to show up. And then it's going to loop around here, loop around here. And then if we press the push button, and this is a random event, whenever we push the push button again, it's going to be two where it's going to bypass all this and shut off the red and green, turn the blue on, and then if we push it one more time, it's going to reset the counter back to zero, shut blue off, and then it's going to repeat where this is going to be red, green, blue every time we, we push the push button. So let's see how that works. Now as we can see here, it starts off with it being red. If I push this down, when I press it down, the push button here is going to turn to green as the voltage on the push button falls. So right now it's 3.3, press it again, it's blue, push it again, but only when I press down does this value change. Now we're going to look at next is changing the pb.fall that's here to pb.rise. And let's take a look and see how that works. Now just by changing this to pb.rise, when I press the button, nothing happens until I release the button. Press the button, release the button. So on the rising edge, it's going to change. So we can trigger it on rising edge, 
or falling edge. Now typically once you set this up it's going to enable IRQs by default but we can put in the enable and disable IRQs in our code and see how that's going to change things. Now in this version of the code right after pb.rise and setting up where the address is of our interrupt service routine I put pb.enable IRQ just to make sure it's enabled. It's enabled typically by default but down here I've made a couple changes. One of them is to get rid of counter equals zero and to have pb.disable so that once it gets to this final one after the button press it's not going to do any of this again. So let's take a look and see what that means. So again if I press this down nothing happens till I let it rise, push down, let it rise, push down it's shutting off and after this nothing happens because I've disabled the push button from actually adding one to the count. Now let's take a look at a slight modification of our program. We're going to put digital in right SW2 which is our right push button. Now we're going to say here is if right equals equals zero reset the counter because after you press the counter for blue it's going to go from two to three to four to five. So what we want to do is reset the counter back to zero and then enable the IRQ again. So let's just see what that means in terms of what we're running here. So when we did this first, we pressed this, we went to green, on the rising edge we went to blue, and then it stopped and wouldn't do anything. Now if we press this again, it's going to start off with red, go to green on the rising edge, go to blue, and so on. So we can re-enable it just by pushing our right push button, as we can see here. So the enable here allows us to enable, but it's enabled already, but we can disable and re-enable our IRQ inner code at any time. So far we've dealt with external events, where the external event drops a voltage from high to low on falling edge, or low to high on rising edge. Now let's take a look at periodic interrupts, and we're going to use the ticker class reference to deal with that. Now we have attach, which attaches a function to be called by the ticker class reference here, specifying a time in seconds. Now we also have attach underscore us, which is specifying it in microseconds, which is not that common because doing things at this small amount of time will make sure that the existing code that you're writing will not be able to run properly. So this is the most common one here. Besides attaching, we can detach the function as well. Let's take a look at an example here. We can say ticker space timer and then down here we can say timer dot attach and this is going to be our periodic interrupt here where we specify it by ampersand at time which is the actual address of where this function is and say 5 for 5 seconds. And that's all we have to do to set this up. Let's see how we would apply that to the code that we've already got. Okay, what we've done here is we've taken out all references to the left push button. We put in ticker space color underscore change and down here we've made reference to that by putting in color underscore change dot attach and we're attaching this interrupt service routine to color change and we're saying that every two seconds it's going to then execute this code here which means every two seconds it's going to change the count which means that if we take a look at our lead here, it goes red for two seconds, green for two seconds, blue for two seconds, and constantly repeats. Now what we've also done is we said digital in right SW2, right push button, and what we want to do there is if we push our right push button, we want to shut off all of our colors and wait at least three seconds for that to take effect, and then do the color change detach. So when I press the button now, it seems to go out. But you're going to have another color coming up because who knows what the counter was when it dropped out. Because if the counter in this case was 2, it's going to turn on the blue LED. So if we want these to go out completely, we're going to have to make a slight change to our code. Now, the changes we have to make are saying that counter is equal to 4. And that's going to be a counter value outside the range. But what we have to do is change the last else to not just else but else if counter equals equals three to do this and then else after that do nothing. So since we set it to some value bigger than two it should do nothing. Let's just see how that works. So again it's counting here 
and as it goes back to zero when we hit this this time we're going to see that it's going to stay out and not go up to any other value because we set counter to four which is not in the range of zero one and two